Hi guys, it's me, Andrea. Today I will show you a page. No, it's a card actually. It started as a page, but halfway through I decided um, it looks much better as a card. So you see me here drawing a beehive on a wooden stand. I have a reference, of course, next to me. And I think it came out quite nice at the end. At the moment I'm still sketching. And I will go over with uh, micron pen at the end when I finish this yeah. and um, that's a point nil five go over all the lines and after that I erase all the pencil work As you can see me doing here and then I start uh, painting Oh no, I start, of course not, start with embossing, heat emboss. So this is my uh, antistatic body, body, and uh, this is the stamp I'm using, it's a little B. This stamp is from a company from uh, Switzerland, so. And I use Versamark and stamp it randomly over that page. Here and there, that's watercolor paper I'm working on, so it, get soaked up quite a bit so couldn't really make out where I had stamped already that's why I'm holding this paper in different angles so I use white embossing powder because I will definitely um, go over it with a cloth then and, and rub over it that the paint is not sitting on top that's much better with white ones and this was the moment actually I decided mm, no that would be a fantastic motive for a card and I cut it down to 8x8 and this is uh, my big bee, it's from Stamputic it is not really a bee, it's a bumblebee so but of course it's okay so I heat emboss that, um, yeah emboss that with uh, black embossing powder and cut that out later Heated, of course, and but I set that aside for now and start with the page or with the card. Go on and give it a light, just a wash, because I want to be able to work with all my media media on top without it to soak into too deep into the page. Um, this is um, the background. I start with a light blue, and I only use my fingers here put the paint lightly down and then I go over it with a baby wipe and the next layer is a turquoise and um, do it in the same way, put it on with my fingers and then wipe over it with a baby wipe and so I can control areas where I want to have it darker or lighter on the bottom that's an olive green I use and a dark olive green but that's all on colors no other ones of course apart from the beehive of course you go in at the moment I'm doing this um, texture this beehive what is it made of but the texture in this this material you have I put in with my uh, micron again and uh, of course the planks from this wood, wooden stand and at the end I go around the whole beehive and have very sketchy lines you can't see it now but at the end in the short uh, in the close-up you will see it I quite like to keep these things very sketchy and the leftover paint I use paint I use um, at the edges so now I cut the bee and of course they are quite delicate parts and I tend to leave a bit more at the edges you see the whiter parts but it doesn't matter you can cover that with a black pen as I do here with I use the big, big pen big brush and to um, cover that up sometimes you have this antennas for example they are so so delicate so I always leave an edge or a bigger edge and, and cover that with black afterwards. <clears throat> Easy to do. And now you can't see any white edges. And the um, <clears throat> wings I put a bit of blue on top, this distress um, markers. 
sprayed it out with my water tank brush so that it's only a touch of blue. And this are uh, distress markers in yellow, squeezed lemon, another yellow, and uh, this mustard seed. And that's it. And that gets set aside again for later. That's how it looks. You can hardly see the blue. It's a light, light touch, really. So for the beehive, I use a gold green. And um, I will go on on the edges on the left for the lighter part, highlighted with a bit of yellow, and on that side with a bit of darker green later. This is the lighter yellow on that side, where the light reflects on, shines on. And the other side where it's a bit darker sits more in the shadow but it won't stop here I will go on later with pit pens and uh, shade it even more the wooden stand I use this gray a warm gray it is and on top of that um, it's a burnt sienna and I dab it off with my, my paper towel again to distress it even more so and then I start to go in with my uh, brush pit pens to shade they are fantastic for shading absolutely like to to use them for that job and uh, when you have acrylic on top it's easy to to shade you know they are staying wet for quite a while and you can shift it around wipe it with your fingers perfectly and um, here that's a gold green I use for more shading in the beehive sometimes you really have to 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 dry it with a heat gun because it takes a bit more time to to dry so this is a masking fluid and what I will do is go around this embossed bees because I want to later I want to put some a light you know with my finger something on top only to hit the raised areas but I want to protect the surrounding, so it's always a bit difficult to stay only on the raised areas. Um, let that dry and then I'm going with the stamping. I use this forget-me-not and cobalt blue and on, on the bottom that green. It's all archival ink with my go-to script stamp from Kaisercraft. And more shade in here, I use my Stabilo, that's a brown one, a fine liner, to have this uh, creases or this valleys um, a bit darker to um, define this shape a bit more and I think that does the job more shading on the wooden stand and I on the whole page or the whole card I'm only using my fingers you know for painting and and wiping and, and blending in so that's quite I quite like to do that so that's a graphite pen from uh, Faber Castell it's a non water soluble and I went over the bees over the raised areas that worked quite good and I was really pleased with it but there it was too dull for me and that's why I decided to use Viva Gold, uh, Viva Inca Gold in graphite at the end to get a bit of shine on top of them. I let that dry when I put that on afterwards. I let that dry and um, polished it with a soft cloth before I removed the masking fluid. And it worked fantastically. So the, I remove it by rubbing really from the outside into the base that there was no risk of smearing it into the page. And it worked really, really well. As you can see, it was a good idea to protect that. And yeah, you can see it in the close-up afterwards. This is a stamp that is from a set from Joffy Stems from one of the flower ones. I quite like to use this bubbles and that's a little bubble stamp. It's a, in a freebie. I got stamp set called Little Critters, I think. So for the highlights, I use this Posca in white and highlight a bit on the beehive and around the beehive 
before I go into the bubbles. I will um, cover the small bubbles completely with white and the big ones I only use one bubble to put white on it because I thought it was too much to um, paint into them all in white. I think it would be would have been too much. So this I layer now on a black cardstock as you can see in this way that I have uh, have it perfectly in the same with the same edges that's what I always do glue it down and now I cut it down to size that's so much easier than measuring or doing this fingernail trick and much more precise as you can see and this is an A3 cardstock stock actually I use here for this 8x8 I um, did, um, put it together in the middle so I folded it in, in the middle and after I glued it down I could cut the rest off easy again and that's the finished card not quite I have to put the V on I really like to put the embellishment on when the card is layered already because it makes it makes everything so easy much more convenient so that the stamping and it says the queen is looking for a new home and I think that describes my situation at the moment okay I found a home already so but I, I thought it's a funny thing um, I put a bit of blue on on that um, stamping and etched it with a black pig pen and fussed a lot around where to put it at the end I decided to have it down there and etched around with an ink pen and that's it and you will see the close-up coming now and at the end you will see some pictures so I'm really pleased with that card and I will send that to a special person when we are moving with our new dress so I thank you a lot for watching guys I hope you like it and I hope I will see you with my next project so have a fantastic time guys bye bye